On December 4, 1971, a convoy of 40 Pakistani tanks and 2,000 soldiers raced through the Thar Desert across the Indian border. Their mission is to attack and capture the border town of Longewala in India. The ensuing battle between the Pakistani aggressors and the Indian defenders came to be called the Battle of Longewala and it became the most cherished war in the history of the Indian subcontinent. This is the story of that heroic battle. By November 1971, it became clear to Pakistan that war with India was inevitable due to the deteriorating humanitarian crisis in East Pakistan, as it was called then. Pakistan was thoroughly convinced that East Pakistan, laying over 1,600 kilometers through land and 5,500 kilometers through sea, was undefendable. So if the war broke out, the Indian army would quickly overwhelm the Pakistani forces posted in East Pakistan. The then Pakistani president, Ahaya Khan, realized that if Pakistan is somehow able to invade and annex large areas in western India, he would be in a better position to bargain for territories captured in East Pakistan by the Indian army. India, meanwhile, drew up its battle plans to attack the town of Rahim Yar Khan. This town was of strategic importance as capturing this town would cut off the rail as well as the road link between Sindh and Punjab starving the Pakistani forces of fuel and ammunition delivered to Karachi. Pakistan's high command anticipated India's battle plans and came up with a bold strategy. The Pakistan army would launch a quick offensive through the towns of Longewala, Ramgarh and Jaisalmer. After taking over these towns, the infantry units would dig deep into the desert in well-fortified positions, making it difficult to free them for the Indian army. For this purpose, a separate division the 18th Division was formed. This involved two infantry brigades and two armored regiments. In total, the offensive consisted of 2,000 soldiers and 40 tanks. One infantry brigade with an armored regiment will capture and establish a firm base at Longewala. The 51st Infantry Brigade and the 22nd Cavalry would then proceed beyond Longewala to capture Ramgar and Jaisalmer. Even though Pakistan had good intelligence of the area, they made some grave mistakes. The Longewala post, which the Pakistanis thought was a BSF post, was actually an army post held by the Punjab regiment and well fortified. Moreover, the entire theatre of war was in the Thar Desert. The Pakistanis did not know that the loose sand in the Longewala area was a trap for the heavy tanks of the Pakistani army. On the Indian side, the Longewala post was held by the A Company of the 23rd Battalion of the Punjab regiment led by Major Kuldeep Singh Chandpuri. Chandpuri had 120 men, one jeep-mounted M40 recoilless rifle, a few MMGs, 81mm mortars and 10 camels of the BSF. Major Chandpuri's 120-member team was now up against 2,000 men and 40 tanks of the Pakistani army. During the night of December 4th, Major Kuldeep Singh's patrol team of 20 detected a large number of armored vehicles approaching the border post. This was also confirmed by the Army's air observation post aircraft flown by Major Atma Singh. Major Chandpuri then got in touch with the battalion headquarters requesting urgent reinforcements and artillery support. The battalion headquarters gave him the choice of staying put and containing the attack as much as possible or carrying out a tactical retreat to Ramgar as reinforcements would not be available for at least six hours. Major Chandpuri now had a very important decision to take. Since Chandpuri's company had no transport to safely escape and was facing a mobile enemy, he decided to stay back and fight the advancing Pakistani army with the little resources he had. This was a very brave decision. The war began at 12.30 am. Pakistani artillery opened fire on the lone Indian post. Five camels of the BSF were killed immediately. When the Pakistani tanks reached a close range of 15 to 20 meters, the Indian soldiers fired their anti-tank weapon, Piet. Two tanks of the Pakistani army were taken out. The Pakistani troops then began to surround the Longewala posts and would attack from all directions. This plan progressed slowly as the loose sand of the Thar Desert made the tanks sink. Many tanks of the Pakistani army got stuck in the sand. 
By the time the Pakistani tanks moved in position to attack, it was already early morning. Now the Indian Air Force sent the HF-24 Maroots and Hawker Hunter jets to attack the Pakistani tanks. These aircraft did not have night vision capabilities and hence they could attack in day only. These Indian jets armed with T-10 anti-tank rockets and 30mm cannon fire started taking out the Pakistani tanks one by one. Without the support of the Pakistani Air Force, which was busy somewhere else, the Pakistani tanks became sitting ducks. The Indian jets pounded the Pakistani tanks and artillery relentlessly. By noon the next day, 22 Pakistani tanks were taken out by the Indian fighter jets. The confusion and the desperate zigzag movement of the Pakistani tanks to avoid being hit from air were captured by this photo of the sand tracks of the tanks. Now the 20th Lancers, commanded by Colonel Bawa Guruvajan Singh, along with the 17th Battalion of the Rajputana Rifles, marched into the battle for the final assault on the Pakistani column. It was at this time that the Pakistani commanders ordered a full retreat. The Battle of Longewala saw the Pakistanis lose 200 soldiers and 36 tanks, whereas the Indians lost 2 soldiers, 5 camels and one of the jeep-mounted recoilless rifles. For his part, the Indian company commander, Major Kuldeep Singh Chandpuri, was decorated with India's second highest gallantry award, the Mahavir Chakra. On the other hand, the Pakistani divisional commander was dismissed from service. If you like this video, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.